Do you know what I believe? I believe that this church and you who are now in this building, I believe that we could have and enjoy a sense of the divine presence so sweet, so beautiful, so tender, that it would change our whole personality, that it would change our attitude toward each other, that it would clear up a lot of things some of you are troubled with inside of you, that it would be like the coming of spring to a landscape, sweet and fresh and warm with birdsong and sunshine. There would just be a coming down of the dove. He could find no place for the soles of his feet. And I wonder if that isn't the trouble now with most of us. You want to be filled and blessed, but you're not willing to pay the price. The man who loved the world enough to die for it, died for it. He's here. He'll always be here. Lo, I'm with you always. The Spirit seeks, I say, among us a resting place for his feet. The Holy Ghost seeks a resting place for his feet. And uh, these comings down, we have called them revivals, put away all other things, or any other thing, and say, Come, come, Lord Jesus. Good morning and good afternoon, you know I church believe? family. I believe it's so great to be worshiping with you again. I think this video that we just watched is probably worth watching it more than once. Uh, so hopefully uh, you'll be able to go back and uh, listen to it again. That was the voice of our very own A.W. Tozer. And uh, it's a reminder that our movement is deeply rooted in encountering, experiencing, and seeking the Holy Spirit. As you know, we're going through 40 days of uh, prayer, and I'm so glad that we get to do this not just as a church family, but the entire Alliance family around the world are joining uh, together. And we're about halfway through. We're in, on day 22. So if you have not been following, you can still join us. You can sign up and receive a daily devotional. Prayer is just like an exercise. It, um, requires discipline, it requires uh, uh, muscle memory, it's, it's a uh, habit that we develop. And you can do this as a single, uh, you can do this as a family, but in our family every single day, uh, over dinner time, we would read the devotion together, talk about what God is saying, and pray together. So uh, you can do that with friends, families, and, and just I want to encourage you to be intentional. And at the end of these 40 days, uh, we're planning to end with uh, a, another online event where thousands of Alliance family will be joining from around the world. So uh, that is on, I believe, February 12th at uh, 4.15 and uh, 6.30 Pacific time. We'll get the most uh, details out to you uh, so that you can sign up for that event. And yesterday, uh, we had such a beautiful celebration here in this place. Although there were just about seven or eight of us, uh, we got to celebrate the ordination of Pastor Yu Ping Liu, who was also installed as a Mandarin pastor. And uh, uh, to me, it's really an expression of our vision of bringing people to wholeness and fruitfulness. Uh, Yu Ping is our very own member who received the call of God and then responded and said yes. And then he went through years of preparation uh, to uh, be ordained pastor, so we had a great celebration, and if you missed it, I think the video is going to be available, so I want you to check it out. Um, it's another uh, great reminder that God is at work, and the church is on the move. God's kingdom is advancing even during this pandemic, and uh, this was our second ordination. Yesterday, we also had an Empower retreat, where uh, currently there are about close to 400 women uh, that are going through Empower Training online, and there were about 20 of our own women uh, who also joined the retreat. So 
that was another great reminder that God is uh, powerfully at work uh, even in this pandemic. Uh, finally, I want to remind you that February 6th, uh, in two weeks on Saturday, we are going to have our annual Vision and Prayer Summit. Uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently. Uh, if all goes well, our plan is to have it outside so that we can gather once again. Uh, the space is limited, so you will uh, need to sign up, and that detail is available on our church website. Um, but the vision that we need in this season is really the vision of God. So we want to come together to see God's face and have a time of worship and prayer. So I hope you can uh, join us on February 6th. Uh, so be looking out for that and mark down on your calendar. Uh, will you join me in prayer as we enter into a time of worship? Father, we thank you that we have this wonderful freedom uh, to come together as a body of Christ uh, to lift up your name. We know that our worship does not depend on the location. It does not depend on our circumstances. Uh, we know that no virus can stop us from praising your name. So, Lord, we collect our hearts together today, and we come together as a family of God to exalt your name wherever we are. And, Lord, we are longing for another deep encounter with you. So, in every home, on every computer screen or Zoom screen, Father, we pray that your manifest presence will visit us once again, and that our heart and soul will be refreshed. Our spirit will be filled with your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that we can live this empowered life. Take delight in our worship and in our thanksgiving today. We offer this as our living sacrifice. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Amen. Church, we invite you, uh, wherever you're at, to just stand with us as we sing these songs.
gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom. Steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to Him. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. The Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, His power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend. I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold. My sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. And oh, the chains are released. I can sing. I am free and not I, but through Christ in me. Sing with every breath. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for He has said that He will bring me home. And day by day, I know He will renew me, until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I give you our worship and our praise this morning. You are worthy of our worship. We love you, Lord. We pray all this in your name. Amen. In recent years, I've developed a love for cooking. Sunday is my day to cook. Most of my attention is spent thinking about and preparing the main dish. But dinner seems incomplete without dessert. And so, dessert is a must, even if it's something simple. Speaking of desserts, my wife Christy makes great desserts like peanut butter pie and chocolate chip cookies.
but it would be impossible to have peanut butter pie without peanut butter and impossible to have chocolate chip cookies without chocolate chips. In Colossians 1, 9, and 10, Paul gives us another understanding of incomplete and impossible. Colossians 1, 9 says, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. And verse 10 continues, So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord, and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. Think about it. Verse 9 without verse 10 is incomplete and falls short of the will of God. But verse 10 without verse 9 is impossible. In other words, being filled with a spirit without a fruit-bearing life is incomplete and living a fruit-bearing, discerning life that pleases the Lord is impossible without being spirit-filled. In this week of prayer, we want to welcome the fullness of the Spirit to empower us for a fruit-bearing, impactful life in ministry. So whether you're a student, young adult, older adult, church leader, pastor, or international worker, would you join me in asking for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit to help us see what God sees? and what he desires to do in us and through us this year? In hey, recent years, I've developed a love SJCAC, and good afternoon, New Vine families. Great to be with you all on this Sunday. I must say that um, I'm actually a bit nervous because we are live streaming our morning service. And it's been a while since I've preached live, um, even though there are not that many people in the sanctuary, just a few. Um, but uh, I, I've been so used to having a camera right in front of me and recording the last 10 months. So this is definitely a newer experience or something that I have to uh, get back used to. So bear with me. You know, as you know, we have been joining with our US Alliance family going through 40 days of prayer. And I hope that you've been able to dig deeper into God's word, uh, read and reflect on the devotionals, and follow the prayer points each day. Can you believe that we are actually more than halfway through? Like Pastor Ted mentioned earlier, we are on day 22, and we will move into week four this upcoming week. And I hope that you've been blessed, and we'll continue to pray together through each week's themes. Uh, you know, actually, I've really appreciated how each week's theme has progressed from the previous week and how they relate and build upon each other. As you'll recall, week one, we talked about the holiness of God and some of his eternal attributes. We began by being reminded of who our God is um, and how awesome he is. And we looked at a passage from Isaiah chapter 6, when Isaiah saw a vision of the Lord seated high and in all his splendor and awesomeness. But then he realized his own unholiness and how he was a man of unclean lips. But God didn't leave Isaiah hanging, and instead a seraphim flew over and touched Isaiah's lips with a hot burning coal and cleansed him from his uncleanliness and his sins were atoned for. And because of this encounter with a holy God, Isaiah's life was transformed and he was able to say, here I am, Lord, send me. Now, last week, week two, Pastor Ted spoke on repentance. And because of God's holiness, we can only respond in repentance when we look within. Confession certainly plays a part at the core of repentance. But really, it's about change, changing course. If there's no change, there's really no repentance. And Pastor Ted took us through some verses in Revelation 2 and 3 and letters to the seven churches, repenting of our unrighteousness. Uh, have we abandoned our first love to Jesus? Of our unfaithfulness, uh, have we broken our covenant relationship with the Lord? Of our vanity, are we looking good only on the outside and being more concerned what other people think of us and our reputation, but having no substance inside? Repenting of our worldliness. Have we been so comfortable living in our world, especially living in Silicon Valley, that we have lost our true purpose as individuals, as believers in him, and as a church? 
So the question that we left you with was, what do you need to turn away from? And this past week, if you've been following with the devotions, we have been focused on spirit empowerment or the fullness of the spirit. You know, only when we are repentant, only when we change, are we, only when we turn away from our sins can the, only the Holy Spirit fill us and empower us for his purposes. You know, from the video that we just saw, uh, we were reminded that being filled with the spirit without a fruit-bearing life is incomplete. And living a fruit-bearing, discerning life that pleases the Lord is impossible without being spirit-filled. You know, as believers, we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But perhaps the real question becomes, how much does the Holy Spirit have of you and of me? In other words, are we seeking the fullness of the Spirit daily surrendering to him and having him fill us so that we can bear fruit and live a spirit-filled life. You know, as I was going through the devotions this week, um, the Lord kept bringing two words to my mind. They are surrendered and full. Surrendered to Jesus, yielded to the Holy Spirit. Full, not of myself, but of the Holy Spirit's presence, power, and work in my life. Now, the first word, surrendered. Now, when I think of the word surrendered, I immediately think of war scenes, a white flag, soldiers dropping their guns and holding up their arms in surrender. And a side note, maybe that's because my kids always listen to focus on the family's adventures and odyssey. And recently in the van, we've been listening to the story about Sergeant Alvin C. York, a real story from World War I where this Christian soldier took command and captured 132 German soldiers all by himself. Those Germans basically surrendered. They basically threw down their weapons and surrendered and followed the sergeant um, back to the US Army. But seriously, who wants to surrender? Surrendering is a sign of weakness. Being on the losing side, like for the Germans, they, they surrendered. No one wants to lose, right? We all want to win. You know, how many of us growing up were taught to surrender? I wasn't. How many of you parents are teaching your kids the value of surrendering? Probably not, right? I'm certainly not. We want to instill within our next generation a winning attitude to work hard, to be competitive, to win, to be number one, right? At least that's what the world teaches us. But when it comes to surrendering to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, it's completely opposite. It's not a sign of weakness. In fact, it's actually a sign of obedience. And it's actually a sign of letting go and letting God take control. You know, I've heard that it's really easy to accept Jesus as our savior because then we have fire insurance, right? We won't go to hell. But it's actually much harder to accept him as our Lord. It's actually much harder to say, Jesus, take control. Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Jesus, I depend on you and allow you to have daily reign. Holy Spirit, allow you to have daily control over my thoughts, over my emotions, over my perspectives. And I want to quickly turn to our first scriptural reference today, Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. It's a short verse. If we live by the Spirit... Let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Keeping in step with the Spirit means exactly just that, walking in line with the Spirit of the Lord, not going ahead, not lagging behind, not turning to the right when God says turn to the left, or vice versa. Walking in step with the Spirit. Being so in tune with him that the two of you are always together, joined at the hip. Now, in one of the devotionals this week, um, our good friend Kelvin Walker, who, as you remember, was our Deeper Life Conference speaker last year, right before we went into shelter in place. Remember that time? It was awesome, right? But in his devotional, he said, it's challenging because keeping in step with the Spirit requires surrender. No one likes that word. To me, it means giving up control. And I don't like to be controlled by anyone. That's Kelvin. But I'm sure most of us, we don't like to be controlled by anyone either. You know, all week long, I've been thinking about this concept of control. 
It's so true. I don't like to be controlled by anyone. As I was a kid growing up, I disliked, I was going to use another word, I disliked being controlled by my mother, right? I, I, I want to be in control. Instead, I, I, I don't want to be in control. I want to be in control of the outcome. I want to be in control of my future. I want to be in control of my kids. I want to be in control of Cheryl. Don't wear that. That doesn't look very good on you. Um, I want to be controlled of other people, right? I want to be in control of my own image, of my emotions, of where I'm going, my destination, right? And, and I guess as I was thinking about this control concept, I was also thinking about driving, right? You know, as a kid, I trusted my mom to drive me wherever she took me, right? I didn't know any better. I just sat in the car and she drove me, right? I trusted her. But then as I grew older, you know, she actually, we, I didn't take driver's ed. She actually taught me how to drive. And, but after I started driving, I kind of didn't trust her driving skills anymore. Every time I got in the car, I was like, no, mom, I'll drive. Let me get the keys. I will drive. I didn't trust her. And now we've always heard of the term backseat driver, right? We've always heard about, oh, don't be a backseat driver. But brothers and sisters, so many of us actually invite God. We sometimes surrender. We sometimes say, God, here are the keys. Why don't you take control and drive my life? But yet we're a backseat driver, right? We, we say, no, 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 I don't want to go that way. I want to go here. No, 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 I, I think you made the wrong turn, God. Uh, you know, the destination was back there. We're so easily backseat drivers because we want control. We want to go where, where we think we should be headed. And, and the other thing I was thinking about this week was contrasting the driving example to flying on an airplane. Now, some of you know that pre-COVID, I, I like to fly on planes. Um, you know, I like to go on commercial airlines, and, but I have no idea how to fly one, right? I just get on board, um, I look out the window, I watch movies, I relax, I eat food, um, and I completely trust the pilot, right? I don't even know the pilot. I've not met him or her. I don't even what, know what he or she looks like. But how can I trust someone that I don't know to fly this big aircraft? and think that he or she will get me to that destination. Well, I trust the pilot because I trust that he or she knows how to fly this plane and that he or she is following the coordinates to get to that destination. So because I trust the pilot, I can relax, I can sleep, I can listen to music, I can keep the kids in line after we've had all three. But, but if we can trust an airline pilot who we haven't met before or even known, how come we cannot trust the Holy Spirit and be in step with him? Why is it so difficult to trust the Lord, to say, God, I give you complete surrender. I give you complete control. Here are the keys to my car. Drive this airplane. Why is it that sometimes we question? Why is it that sometimes we doubt? Why is it that sometimes we just don't feel like trusting him anymore? But he's the one, the Holy Spirit is the one that Jesus promised that would come alongside of us to be our helper, to be our counselor, to be our comforter, the one to teach us, to guide us and lead us into all truth. Why is it that we have such a hard time surrendering, giving up control of our lives, of our kids' lives, of our wants, of our wishes, to a Holy Spirit who is gentle, to a Holy Spirit who is loving, to a Holy Spirit who desires to fill us, to empower us, to refresh us, and to renew us each day. If we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. What does keeping in step with the Spirit look for you today, my brothers and sisters? The second word that I want to ponder on with you is the word full. Now, I'm not talking about the physically full kind, um, although as a side, Cheryl did make a delicious oxtail soup yesterday and a yummy sticky rice dish, and I was absolutely full, okay? But that's not what the full I'm talking about. I'm talking about what have you been filling your life with during this season? What are you full of? Are you full of yourself? 
Are you full of, am I full of myself? Am I full of my pride, my own wants, my own desires? Am I full of warp, my own busyness, my schedule? Full of social media, full of the media, full of current events, following this, following that. Uh, which news to believe in, right? The events of the last week, the inauguration, the election, full of video games, screen time, full of our kids, our family. Now, again, these are not bad things. These are actually good things. Some of these are actually God's blessings to us. But what are we filling, consciously filling ourselves with each day? You know, before we can ask the Spirit of the Lord to descend upon us and to fill us, we need to empty ourselves of some of the stuff that shouldn't be in us, some of the junk, some of our bad habits, some of our brokenness, right? Some of the things that have been dragging us down, that have really been depressing us. We need to be emptied of that before we can be full of Jesus and his spirit. The second scripture passage that I want to touch upon is Ephesians 5, 18. It says, do not and do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the spirit. You know, Paul is basically saying, just as the drunkard is under the influence of alcohol, So a spirit-filled believer should be under the influence of the Holy Spirit himself. We should be under the influence all the time. You know, it's okay. Arrest me. I'm under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I don't mind. I don't mind getting a DUI. I'm driving under the Holy Spirit's influence. That's what our goal should be. But a lot of times, we want to be in control. We want to be under my influence. We want to be under maybe our parents' influence. But we don't want to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is to have control over my thoughts, over my actions, just like alcohol controls the thoughts and actions of a drunkard. To be filled with the Holy Spirit means that I need to empty myself of myself and to allow his spirit to pour into me. And to fill me. Not just on a one-time occasion. I know some of you may be thinking, well, I did that. I did that back at um, my retreat or or a youth camp or or whatever. I did that years ago. I surrendered my life. You know, I I asked the Holy Spirit to fill me. That's great. But what I'm talking about is not just a one-time deal, but a constant, daily, um, intentional asking. Right? The command in Ephesians 5.18 is be filled with the Spirit, not just once, but be continually filled. Filled meaning being full to the top, lacking nothing, lacking nothing short of complete, all, oh, even overflowing. The verb that is being used is this active tense, indicating that this is a constant action. Literally, a go on, keep on being filled with the Spirit. Not just a one-time deal. And no wonder sometimes in our Christian walks, we sometimes feel so weak. No wonder we're sometimes depressed. No wonder we're sometimes stuck in a rut. It's because we've forgotten to ask the Holy Spirit to fill us that day. It's because we have not yielded to him. It's because we have not said, God, empty me of my own wants, my own power, my own attitudes, and clothe me with your thoughts. Clothe me, Holy Spirit, with your power. Clothe me, Jesus, with your love. To respond in love to this person who may have made an inappropriate comment, either in word or on paper or on the internet. How do I respond with the spirit of the living God living in me? How do I live each moment, each day, by being under the influence of the spirit of the living God. That's really the challenge today, is what are you full of? I know a lot of times I'm full of myself. I think very well of me. You know, I, I'm, I'm proudful. That's wrong. I need to be emptied of myself. I need to be emptied of my pride, emptied of my ambitions, and say, God, take over. Lord Jesus, come. I surrender. I submit. I yield. And we can yield and trust him to have control because he's the loving Abba Father. He's the one that wants to fill us 
with his dear and precious spirit to empower us, to give us wisdom, to give us direction, to give us understanding, and to give us the strength and the courage and the love for each situation that you and I may be faced with during this season. I know it's been a long 10 months. We haven't been able to gather together in person in this sanctuary or at Mountain View Academy for New Vine. For some of us, it's actually been a pretty difficult season. Maybe it started off kind of nice working from home, but then you realize, oh my goodness, I'm working from home with my whole family. I've got these little ones running around and I have to take care of them. I have to um, do online schooling. And over the last few months, um, I've personally heard of uh, a lot more things that have been coming up with some of you, a lot of challenges. A lot of things that the Lord is doing, that the Lord is working. Family issues, um, husband and wife things, behavioral concerns with our kids, isolation, just um, a lot of tiredness. And I just want you to know that I hear you, I understand. But this is exactly where God is leading us through. Perhaps a realization that we cannot do it anymore on my own strength. I cannot take care of three little ones and their education on my own strength. I cannot teach them on my own strength. I cannot yell and scream at them on my own strength. I give up. Jesus, come. Holy Spirit, I yield to you. I surrender to you. What is it, my brothers and sisters, that the Lord is asking you to yield, to wave the white flag, to say, God, I'm tired. God, I need you. What is it that God is asking you to come to the end of yourself? Are you willing to surrender? He's able. He's willing. He wants to fill you with his peace, his love, his power. Whatever situation you are going through, the Lord is here. The Lord is near. Being in step with the Spirit, trusting him to be your driver, trusting him to be your pilot, really saying, God, take over. Um, that's our prayer for you today, that you would allow the manifest presence, the Holy Spirit, that you would welcome him into your home today, that you would welcome him into your life, that you would say, Lord, I submit to you. I surrender. Would you please come and take over? What are you full of today? Maybe you need to spend some time with the Lord, asking him to empty you of yourself, of your pride, of your ambition, of all the things that are holding you back to living a spirit-filled life with Jesus. Asking for his continuous filling every day. Saying, Lord, every day, how many of you woke up this morning and the first thing you asked was, Holy Spirit, come fill me. Or were you thinking about what you had to do today? We need Jesus. We need his spirit. We need his power. So brothers and sisters, I want to invite you during this time to ask the spirit of the Lord to come. If the Lord would speak to your hearts, I just want to invite the worship team to come up as we prepare to close our service. But I want to take a few minutes and ask you to surrender to the Lord. Whatever it is that you've been holding back, whatever it is that you have held on to and not yielded to him, to lay it all on the altar, to surrender it to him, and to empty yourself of whatever it is 
and that you would be yielded, that you would be continuing to walk in step with the Spirit, but that you would continue to be asking for the Spirit's filling in your life every day, in your family every day, in your home every day, that it wouldn't be a one-time thing that was done in the past, even last week or even yesterday, that it would be a daily occurrence, that you would say, Holy Spirit, come and fill me now. So I want to invite you, even where you are, in your homes, on your sofa, on your chair, in your bedroom, spend some time asking the Lord. Surrender to him the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit to come and fill you now. of our surrender to him, I want to invite you to just stretch out your hands in complete surrender. God, we come before you today. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to draw near to you, to know you as a holy God, but to also to recognize our own sinfulness. But God, we thank you, Lord, that we can submit, we can surrender, we can give you everything that we have been holding on to. Our sins, our bad habits, our bad attitudes. God, whatever it is, Lord, we surrender our control over to you. And Holy Spirit, as we surrender to you, would you come? Would you come anew? Would you come afresh? Spirit of the living God, would you fall upon us? Would you come into our homes, into our families? God, we need you. Would you fill us once again? Lord, for some of us, we've never encountered your touch. God, would you be merciful and gracious and touch us now? <laughs> God, would you come and minister to us like only you can? Would your sweet spirit come and breathe life into those areas that are dead? Would you bring your revival into those places that are tired, that are worn? Would you speak your healing touch and power upon those of us who are sick, upon those of us that have marital issues, upon those of us that are stressed out about how our kids are on the screen all the time, how our kids are just cooped up at home? Father, would you come, Holy Spirit, Bring us your peace. Bring us your joy. Bring us, Lord, your perspective. Help us, God, to see that in you there is life. Help us, Lord, to see that in you there is a stream of living water that is flowing out of us if only we ask, if only we are willing. So, Jesus, would you come, would you pour out your spirit upon us today? But help us to see and hope in you that, God, we know, Lord, that you have not left us. We know, God, that you are working in our circumstances. You are working in our trials. You are working in our struggles. And, Jesus, we ask that you would help us to lift our eyes up to heavenward to see, Lord, what you are doing in our lives and how it is, Lord, that you want us to respond in obedience to you today. Father, come and speak to us now. We ask all of these things in your precious name that we pray. Amen.
I invite you to just stand as we respond in this song. We sing this as a prayer together um, that the Lord would just send his spirit on us. like a river. Peace like a river wash over me. Immerse me in water as deep as the sea. Hide me in love I worship your holy name, Jesus, my everything, all that I am is yours. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit, rain down on me. Break open the heavens and drench the unseen. Pour out your presence as we pour out your praise. Come, Holy Spirit. i 
as we worship your majesty. We worship your holy name, Jesus, my everything. All that we are is yours, as we worship your majesty. We worship your you today. Lord, we love you. Jesus, as we worship your majesty, we surrender to you. We say, Jesus, come, have your way. Holy Spirit, would you come and continue to fill us today? Fill us with your presence. Fill us with your power. Fill us, God, with more of you so that we can face today, so that we can face tomorrow. Thank you, Jesus, that you have promised that you will never leave nor forsake us because we have the Holy Spirit in us. So, Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your word today. Would you work, Lord, continue to work in each and every one of our lives. Continue to work in your church, Lord. We pray, God, that revival would come. Lord, that you would do it again. Lord, that revival would come in our own lives first. Revival would come in your church, God. Father, that you would come, that you would stir our hearts, that you would stir within us a deeper hunger, a deeper desire for you this year, that you would stir within us a deeper desire to be intimate with Jesus, to be in your presence each day. God, that you would um, stir within us a desire, Lord, to, to pray more, Lord, to pray unceasingly, God, that we would be a people People full of your love. We would be a people full of your power. Jesus, we submit to you. And we say thank you, Lord, because you are with us, that you are Emmanuel, that you are God with us. Jesus, we thank you for your sweet presence. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to gather in your name to worship you today. And we ask, God, that you would go before us now as we go from here. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. It's in, in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Please don't forget that after our worship service, join us on Zoom for our fellowship hour or for table talk for New Vine this afternoon. Before we go, we have a special video put out by the Alliance National Office just to say thank you. I know many of you have contributed last year and continue to contribute uh, to the work of the Great Commission, to giving to missions. So this is just a thank you video from our national office. So please enjoy this, and we'll see you again next week. God bless you. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm going to mute myself, but whenever you're ready, go for it. Alliance family, you came through again. As news of COVID hit my office, I wondered seriously about what the outcome would be for the Alliance in 2020. Wow, 2020 was a crazy year. And the world was just thrown into this chaos. The Alliance family really stepped up during a tough year of COVID and we were worried about giving. Because that would have been the easy thing is just to call it quits, fold our hands and say, this is just not, just not the time for ministry. And Alliance teammates rose to the moment because you partnered with us. You know, they just really almost came alive and really gave from their heart. To see it come so overwhelmingly, and I think it was an act of reaffirmation on God's dependence. People were still being fed literally and in terms of the gospel as well. Because of you, our sites were still able to welcome young adults to be discipled and to discover more about the Lord's calling on their life. More people are able to hear the gospel through our international workers. Our workers remained in place during COVID to provide food, medical care, and discipleship to those in need. We were able to provide caring in the midst of COVID's chaos. Teams were able to remain in place on the front lines. As the gospel advanced, people's lives were changed. Experience in Christ in word and deed. Alliance churches here in the U.S. responded bravely and creatively. 
to the needs of not only the church, but of the community. That is so meaningful that we were able to do that in a pandemic year. I feel like we as the Alliance are kind of a part of this big puzzle and we're just adding more and more pieces to that puzzle. Then you realize you're part of this large body of people all working to accomplish the same goal. It feels like it's more of a team and it feels good to be a part of the team. Man, the Alliance is everywhere. Something like this happens. The Alliance is there but it's because of the generosity of the U.S. Alliance family. So thank you so much. Thank you for giving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The work remains unfinished, but so much has been accomplished. Thank you, Alliance family. <laughs> Take three. Maybe. <laughs> <I'll> Yay! <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> I missed you. I miss you. I hope I can see you in person soon. <laughs>